Hello, everyone. Uh, how's everyone doing? Let me know if you can hear me clearly and also see me. Uh, nice to see everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm starting now earlier, uh, quarter to nine instead of nine o'clock. Uh, let me know, uh, type one uh, to make sure that I uh, know you hear me clearly and seeing me as well. Um, Mario, when uh, we say the BOJ holds plus 50% of government ones, what does that, what does it matter? Well, it means that uh, if they have to start selling the bonds, basically doing QT, uh, there, there's going to be, uh, you know, there's not going to be many people there to buy it. Uh, it means they've taken over the market and uh, that they're probably going to have to keep buying more and more. And I think it matters because it, it will mean that uh, the currency is going to continue to get weaker because, yeah, they're, they're going to keep creating uh, yen. Uh, out of thin air to buy the currency. Richard Eastman says recession is a worthless measure tied to to falls in nominal price. Yeah, we're going to look into that today. And and uh, I've said many times that I've thought that we've been in a recession for the since 08, mainly because the budget deficits were so so high and. Uh, but I, I found some interesting data that we can see really clearly see uh, what's going on. And that's what uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Can't you see me, guys? Uh, you're saying that I'm late. Richard Martin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I started on time. I don't know what's going on. Some of you can see me. Some of you can't. I should be visible. That's weird. Yeah, I think you need to go to another stream. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, but I, I am uh, streaming right now. I'll, I'll just wait for people to come on. We'll just wait a little bit and we'll go on for longer today. Yeah, the, the thing is, I, I do the stream with, with Zoom, and Zoom has changed the, the way they uh, set things up. So I, I haven't gotten used to it. So, uh, yeah, I think you need to switch over to, I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, we'll wait a little longer for people to come on. Yeah, get out of this, uh, the stream that you can't see me on, and then go on another one, go onto my YouTube uh, page, and you should find it under live. I'm not sure why people can't see me, <laughs> but... Uh, No, I, I'm on. I don't know why people can't see me. Uh, anyway, uh, Thousand Silver is here. Greg Austin, Sam. Uh, let's see. Do, let's do something. Maybe 
this will work. Uh... Oh, there we go. Uh, that's worked <laughs> i've finally sorted it out sorry about that guys next 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 time i'll get it right <laughs> um okay great great to see everyone here i'll uh I'll pop this out pop out chart okay All right. Happy Sunday to everyone. Um, Elias Jones, I'm corralling them from the other live stream. There are two lives and one is dead and the other one's live. Yeah, I, I think what I need to do next time is uh, make, uh, because it, it, they've changed, the uh, uh, Zoom has changed things. So when I go live, it creates another live stream. So I have to delete the original one that I set up uh, for, and then go on to this one. Yeah, it, it's um, strange. Belly Dance Raver says, thumbs up, Simon Phoenix, Monday in Australia. Yeah. Uh, who else is here? Let's start then. <laughs> I think uh, most of you are here uh, by now, and I'm going to share something with you. And uh, it's, uh, let me go here and share. Okay. So, yeah, this is actually a report from SIFMA, and I'll, I'll show you what SIFMA is first. So SIFMA is the, uh, it's like a capital markets uh, fact book. It's this uh, security and investments uh, firms of America, or I'm not sure what it, the uh, the full, uh, what SIFMA exactly means, but uh, they, they cover all the capital markets. They've got a lot of data. And uh, I was looking at it, um, yesterday actually and i wasn't really looking at uh gdp or anything like that but i went through the whole thing to, to all the 107 pages and i found this here which i thought was uh really interesting um so we've got gdp here for the us in 2007 it was at 14.3 trillion yeah, now it's at 22.3, and it looks really good, doesn't it? it? It looks like it went up by 8 trillion. But then you look at the uh, the deficits. I added them all up. <laughs> they didn't add it all up here. It's about 22 trillion. So you think about it. They had to create 22 trillion of government debt and 22 trillion of deficit spending to get GDP up from 14.3 to 22. So if you go here as well in this little box, you know, I'll enlarge it. Well, that's I think that's enough. So GD, uh, the deficit grew by almost 10% since 2007. And uh, GDP, and don't forget, this is nominal GDP. It's not real GDP. It doesn't account for uh, their bogus inflation was 3.3. So uh, the deficit grew 6.5% more than GDP uh, since over these 15 years or so. And the other thing that I found here that is really interesting, uh, if you go a bit, hold on, let's go back up. I need to show you this as well. So there's the nominal GDP that we just looked at. It went from 14.45 to almost 23. But the uh, real GDP, 
<laughs> is actually uh, much lower. It's at 19.4 trillion. And uh, if you look at real GDP, it's gone up 1.8, while the uh, the deficit is going up by almost 10%. So what I'm trying to say here is that a lot of the GDP growth uh, that we see is fake growth, I would say. It's extra government spending. And uh, the reason why I say that as well, and why GDP really is fake is because of this. And uh, we're going to look at how they calculate the GDP. Uh, so let's share this. So this is from Invest Investopedia. And you can see here a country's GDP uh, is a total consumer spending plus business investment and government spending. So if the government is spending 6.5% more than it should, because we, we all have to run you know, uh, pretty tight budgets or uh, balanced budgets, or else we, we're going to go bankrupt. And uh, you can see how the GDP will get distorted if government is spending a lot. It's going to make GDP look positive. And, and I, I, say, I say that GDP without government spending would have been a, a lot less. And uh, yeah, so that's my uh, reason for saying that we've been in a recession since 08. And uh, let's see here what else I've got for you guys. So go back to the, uh, let's see. Uh, in Durorama, yes, I think it has historically always been included. And, and GDP, really, I, I don't think it's a really significant measure. But a, a lot of people say, oh, how can the economy be, uh, you know, uh, doing so well? And, and most people always think, you know, what are they talking about? The economy isn't doing well. And it's because of that, I would say. And, and I'll bring that uh, I'll bring that up again, the SIFMA. And uh, I mean, this really uh, startled me going through each of the, uh, if you go here, going through each of these and adding them up and getting 22 trillion. So if you think about it, um, yeah, <laughs> would, would GDP, you know, GDP would be, uh, a lot lower if you do 22 trillion you know that that they've put into the economy is it's just all fake <laughs> it, gdp would probably be a lot lower if the uh, government hadn't started spending as much as they did in in all these years here so and look at the national debt of course that's now at uh, around 32 so that's gotten even worse uh from uh 2021. Yeah, Kalai Simlov, I, I do think the end of fiat currency is upon us. Uh, smash the like buttons, LG. Interest rate uh, on a fix for UK bond. With the building society, uh, two four uh, four percent inflation. No, uh, UK uh, CPI is at ten percent. The RPI is at thirteen, and, and I think they've tweaked the CPI to make it look better, and it's still above ten percent. This is called financial repression. Crypto FETT buy gold and silver because you can't cannot taper a Ponzi. I agree. Oh, Shannon Wright, good question. <laughs> uh, which economy did they spend that money on? Well, let's look at another chart. Um, and this is from the Federal Reserve Board. Um, so, and you see who benefited from this uh, Ponzi. 
I think you guys already know it was mostly the people uh, who own assets. Hold on. Here we go. So there you go. This is from the Board of Governors, the Federal Reserve System. Um, so there's the total wealth of the United States, right? Wealth by wealth percentile group. So if you go back to 1990, <laughs> the uh, let's do it uh, in percentage terms. I think that's a little better to do it like that. So you have an idea. The top, let's say the top 1% in 1989 owned 22.7% 22 uh, 22 of all the wealth. And now they own 30.7% of the wealth. So, and also the, the top 10%, if you look here, uh, they uh, 30, about 68, almost 70%, the top 10% uh, hold of the wealth. So that's where the wealth is going, because you can see here back in 89, it was uh, about uh, 60%. And that's now going up to 70%. I would say a lot of the wealth is going uh, to Wall Street, to the big corporations, the military industrial complex, the pharmaceutical uh, complex. It's going into big government as well, I would say. So that's where the wealth is going. And, and that's why you see the, the bottom the bottom 50% uh, <laughs> uh, still only own 3.3% of the wealth. If you look back here, they used to own 38 and uh, the bottom 90%, let's see, the bottom 90% is gone from 30, 40.40%. 40 and the bottom 90 now is at 32%. So that's where the money is gone, all, all this money, all this, uh, all this uh, inflated uh, mythical values. I think it's President Putin who called all the QE, uh, all the government spending, deficit spending, mythical values. And, and now everything is flowing into all that wealth is get. Let's have a look here uh, again at this uh, chart, because now we can look at in dollar terms and you will see. And you'll see uh, how the everything bubble here is. Yeah, it's coming down. And, and I think it comes, if it comes down more, uh, the Fed is going to start inflating again. Uh, maybe not this year or maybe later, later this year. Let's have a look here. Corporate equities and mutual funds. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, how the wealth is coming down. Uh, so hmm. the, the problem is that uh, all this... Uh, Deficit spending didn't go into real productive uh, endeavors. It went on to Wall Street for speculation. It went on to uh, build weapons <laughs> for war. It went on to the pharmaceutical industrial complex, but nothing into infrastructure. And that, that's why I think even if they prick this everything bubble, we're going to continue to see the, uh, the currency be uh, debased because the infrastructure, real things we've neglected, not just in the US, but also in the UK, we've, we've been neglected the real e economy for too long. Uh, Belly Dance Arabia thinks the miners will go through the roof. Yes, I, I, I think so too. I, I think... Uh, if you look at the how much debt they've created, and now also the debt is still the same. The debt is still rising. The problem is that the um, the Ponzi, you know, the uh, financial assets that support their debt, that debt are going down in value. The economy is going to go down, so the debt is going to be really unsustainable. And what are they going to do? Well, they're going to print more and spend more governments to keep it going. And that's going to put a rocket up uh, gold and silver and commodities. 
Yeah, Raimondo, I'm sorry about that. Um, I need to wor uh, work uh, the new system out. I'm, I'm glad you could make it. Michael K, love your views. Keep up your important work. Oh, thank you, Michael, to for your uh, yeah for your praise. It's or or feedback. It's good to know people appreciate it. Spock twenty twenty four metal detects civil war areas. Yeah, I'm sure you can find a lot of uh, dimes, uh, quarter, uh, silver, half dollars. Yeah. I used to watch some guys, they used to go, uh, they're on YouTube digging for, uh, they used to find quite a bit of coins, quite a few silver coins. Uh, Mario, would you touch any junior gold gold miners? Well, junior gold miners are usually uh, companies that are exploring and they're trying to find gold. Uh, so they're not producing gold. And uh, the majority of them, what they want to do is drill and drill, and that's very uh, capital intensive. And, and then they want to hit, uh, have very good results, so they can sell it on, sell, you know, be sold to a big uh, mid tier or you know a, a Newmont of the world or a Barrick. That's what uh, the the junior miners are all about. So they're risky, and uh, some of them go on to produce gold but that's even more capital intensive once you uh have good uh, drilling uh, finds to actually build a mill or do the operations to get the gold that takes a lot of money so i would say that a small percentage of all these junior miners explorers uh, they will uh probably fail but if the gold market goes crazy on the upside you could see a, a lot of them do well, even though they're not really, you know, a little bit like a dot-com bubble. So you need to be careful uh, with those junior miners, I would say. Yeah, only 569 watching seems like. Yeah, well... We're going to have to, hopefully it will increase. Let me uh, do something else here, see if it works. Uh, crypto FETT, thank you for a super chat. Name three to five mining stocks to consider, please. Well, I, I think uh, the three big ones that I think uh, gold, if gold, you know, when, well, I think gold will go up, of course. Uh, the tr three top ones are Newmont, Barrick, and I would say Franco Nevada. Franco Nevada is like a royalty or yeah royalty uh gold uh company it's an interesting concept so those three and uh in the silver space i guess hecla mining pan american silver and uh first majestic there is a lot more and, and what i recommend you do crypto f e t t is to go into the prospectus of like uh some uh mining funds like the sprot Sprott Fund or go into the G G GDX and GDXJ prospectus and see what they hold and uh, have a look around. I, I that's how I uh, that's how I I did a lot of my investing in the miners, seeing what other people held. Uh, Shannon Wright, thank you for your super chat. Have an awesome awesome day, everyone. Thank you. You too, Shannon. Uh, let's see, I've got some other things I wanted to show you. 
uh, I said that uh, governments are not going to stop um, spending because I think if they really try to kill this everything bubble, and you've seen that um, a lot of the, the growth that we've had since 08 has been ephemeral, i.e. it's been not real. <laughs> it's been all through government deficit spending. And uh, yeah, if they try to bring everything down, I think we'll have, it'll be worse than riots. It will be the bad kind of anarchy, I would say, because the definition of anarchy proper definition is not really bad, but it's it would be what most people think of anarchy. Uh, I, I don't think they would even be able to impose martial law because uh, government will collapse and they won't even be able to pay uh, people to enforce the law. So here you go. Uh, Germany and France push for huge spending to compete with the U.S., so it's a race to the bottom. Uh, I'll probably you will probably get the UK doing that, or if they don't want to uh, be left uh, uh, behind. So there's another example um, that they're going to keep inflating. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, so wh what are uh, you know if you watch CNBC and if you watch Bloomberg and the mainstream media, uh, they'll say that everything is great. Right. But but everything, you know, was great kind of for Wall Street up until 2022. And now it isn't anymore. So maybe they will wake up. So there are some statistics that show that pe most people are not really participating or haven't participated in this so-called growth since 2008. And you can see here uh, what percentage of Americans have less than 50 uh $500 in the bank, and it's 50%, <laughs> you see? So that's not good. The other thing that's happened, uh, if you look here, consumer loans, credit cards, and other revolving plans, uh, look at uh, how, where it was in the run-up to 08, and then we had the collapse. But look at it now. That That's the, the other way that uh, the general public, you know, the bottom, I would say the bottom 90%, that's how they've kept going. But now that interest rates are rising as well, if interest rates uh, rise much more, uh, everything's going to come down to earth. And that's why I think the, the Fed, uh, if they're not careful, they're going to create a huge uh, accident. So that's the other one I wanted to show you. Uh, I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff here and go back to see some of your questions. All right, Carlos Garcia, uh, the, that's one reason of Peru's president said no more gold exploitation and got removed. Now population is revolting. Mm. UK is heading in the direction of Japan. Uh, Ama Det, uh, <laughs> not so sure about that. Um, yeah, in terms of a uh, lost decade, it's been a lost 15 years. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow in my video for tomorrow morning. So I'm going to leave that because it's very similar to what's happening to the, to the U.S. But the U.S. having the major reserve currency, they've been able to inflate more. And by inflating, I mean not the CPI. By inflating, I mean all the deficit spending to make their economy look a lot better than it is. The, the UK wasn't, they did the same, but not to the, to the extent that the Americans have done. Mr. Fed up, fed up, I'm almost uh, uh, frightened to check the markets in the morning. M money is leaving the UK fast. I think so, Daniel. Uh, yeah. A, a, a lot of people are leaving uh, a lot of big capital. Uh, and I think uh, if if labor get into power, I think next year is when they have to call the general election. Yeah, I, I see. I don't see things improving because Keir Starmer wants to uh, strangle the economy uh, by stopping stopping energy. Uh, an economy needs cheap and uh, abundant energy, and he doesn't want to allow 
uh, people, uh, companies to drill for oil and gas, hydrocarbons, that's not going to work. It hasn't worked um, as we've seen in the last few years. So some of you, hopefully you saw uh, what I talked about, the fact that all the deficit spending has really kept GDP looking fairly good. And as I said, the headline uh, title of this live stream is that we've been in a recession. I believe we have. And um, yeah, th and that's what's going on. And, and the same is for the UK. Uh, LG, Mario, would you touch any junior gold miners? Yeah, I, I would. But as I said, they're riskier. Uh, you have to do your, your homework. And by homework, uh, is going on to their website and reading about it and learning about what, it, what it's all about. Uh, David Bradley says, good morning. Good day, Mario and friends. Gold has a long nose and always smells a dead rat. <laughs> yeah. How does Silver Trust work? Uh, I don't know what Silver Trust is. Is that an ETF? Don't know. Over here, some people are uh, taking like sums of money out of the bank accounts and sticking it in the mattress. Uh, you know, I have a, a bit of fiat saving in the bank and they're not really giving me too much interest. And why Why have I got that in the bank? Not, uh, let's say, in gold. Well, because it's for tax reasons. So I need to pay some tax in uh, July now. I already did my tax return. I think it's due on the 31st of January here in the UK. I, I did mine in February, got, got it done. But uh, yeah, I was thinking because I got a good chunk now in the bank. And they're only paying half a percent. I was thinking of taking that cash out and keeping it at home. Why should they take my money, give me half a percent and make maybe three and a half or four? Uh, why don't they give me more? They should be giving me more, especially with a, a CPI rising at 10 percent. So I, I think that's a good idea. If you take the, the cash out of the bank, you're not... Yeah, you might, you're not really going to lose that much because rates are so low, but you're going to starve the beast of your, yeah, of your funds because they won't be able to lend out your money three times for a lot more than they're paying you because they're ripping you off. Uh, dude. Scooter said, JP Morgan says investors should sell stocks and take profits. Well, I think we are in a bear market in stocks, but uh, I think you need to be selective. I'm not giving advice here. You know, it depends what kind of stock. Maybe you can sell, sell JP Morgan stock or Goldman Sachs stock and uh, maybe the tech stocks. I think they're going to continue to suffer. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people being let go, like Google, 10,000 people, Microsoft. It's getting quite bad, I think. LG, thank you. Rick Rule is a good person to follow regarding gold and silver mines. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to listen to uh, King World News, a lot of times he advertises for the small gold miners uh, and the big ones. So he, he might give some some uh, idea and also 321gold.com sometimes uh bob moriarty talks about opportunities in gold mining and silver mining uh normal norm i thought i heard sunak says say he wants to lower taxes yeah in his dreams uh nor normal norm <laughs> he will always say that but he we've got the biggest uh tax burden in 70 years in this country. <laughs> Scott 49140, I found it hilarious. I found, I found it hilarious that our new king said in his first message, message to the nation that he will do his best to uphold the constitution. Well, maybe his best is not good enough, uh, Scott. And, uh, yeah, I guess the UK that doesn't have a written constitution, but um, yeah. 
It's all talk. It, it's not what people uh, say, it's what they do, right? Endeavor Silver, I haven't looked into that. Uh, I, I think all most, uh, yeah, but I, I think that's a good company. I, I did an interview with um, Francis Hunt, the market sniper, and he uh, recommended uh, EDV, it's Endeavor Mining. That's a different one. He thinks that's a good opportunity. So you might want to check that one out. It's not Endeavor Silver, but Endeavor Mining. I think it's a risky one, but he he tech he sees it doing well technically. Daniel says he can't invest in the UK. High cost, low reward. Yeah, that's why the FTSE has gone sideways for 25 years. Ruby says mining is energy intensive and the West is trying to eliminate cheap energy uh true but uh i'm not sure they're gonna do so right away polymetto international is that another uh, minor? Yeah, I have First Majestic. First Majestic has been kind of underperforming a lot, like because uh, I follow it and I have some, but uh, I think it eventually do well. My opinion on gold this week: <laughs> uh, it's still money, Daniel Sass. <laughs> That's what I look at gold as: still money. Uh, I, I know you want to know where the, where I think the price is going. It's always difficult in the short term, but good, gold looks pretty good. Uh, and uh, Rafi uh, Farber, who was on la last week with me on the live stream, he did a video today about how uh, on Comex, uh, they've taken delivery of a billion dollars worth of gold in January. And that's very unusual. And apparently is a lot of a lot of it is the Wall Street banks like Citigroup doing it and uh for its house account which is very unusual because Wall Street banks usually uh they don't want to have anything to do to do with physical gold so uh, not sure what it means but it, it it seems interesting that uh so much gold is uh being taken uh for, deliver uh, you know taken away from comex and comex is not really supposed to be like a a coin shop or or a physical gold shop is just a place there to manipulate and and trade uh, the price of gold it's like a bucket shop really so yeah i, I think gold is going to continue to do well because things are unraveling in the economy and if the fed uh, keeps uh, tightening uh, too much more for for a lot longer, there will be an accident. Hi, Brody Al Alden. A Alden says he got here late. Thank you for all the great work. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for your uh, kind words. Uh, William, William P. M. C. D. Platinum, yeah, I don't. It is a precious metals, precious metal, but I don't really think it's a monetary one. But uh, I think it will do well as well because it's a a hard asset. It can't cre be created out of thin air like the that twenty two trillion in deficit spending that we've had since 2007 which is crazy to think about uh michael kennedy do you think a reset is actually taking place at the moment i i think so uh because and if the market is going to do the reset uh because we have a fiat currency system so the money is not fixed, like it's not real gold. 
So that like when uh, FDR did a reset in 1934, he first had to take all the gold and then he waited a few months, beginning of 34, he did the reset. He revalued the price of gold from $20.67 per ounce to 35. And that was an overnight reset. <laughs> uh, yeah, because, and, and that's how he screwed uh, in the majority of the public who handed in their gold for 20, you know, their uh, $20 gold pieces for $20. And uh, come January, they weren't able to buy uh, that anymore. So, but in a market where there's floating uh, currencies, I think, yeah, like you said, it's being done. And uh, my uh, view of a currency reset will be when the uh, Dow to gold ratio is near one. And I think that's when things will happen. And the fact that central banks' uh, balance sheet are getting a lot worse, they're losing a lot of money, they're going to have to let gold go up and silver and all the other commodities are going to go up. Scott, 49140, is it true a lot of silver mines are actually being mothballed right now as they can't find it and dig it up, eventually sell it for a profit? Um, maybe. I haven't really looked into that, but uh, it depends on the silver mines. Some mines have a uh, average cost below $20. Uh, some might have more, so they might have to mothball it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. LG, your thoughts on the uh, inverted yield curve as recession indicator. I bought six-month treasuries last week for 475 annualized yields. Uh, well, I did a interview with, uh, as I said earlier, with um, the market sniper. And uh, the last nine times there was an inverted yield curve, we got a recession. Uh, but the recession happens after the yield curve starts disinverting and steepening. That's when the accident happens. But it, it's a great indicator for a recession. And why is that? Well, because banks and financial institutions, they like a, an upward sloping yield curve. So they'll borrow money, uh, let's say for one month and lend out uh, like a, at a term of 10 years and they keep rolling it every month to keep that, you know, those 10 year assets in their balance sheet and they make the difference. It's a normal upward sloping uh, balance sheet uh, yield curve. So with those profits and uh, yeah, and they, and they will lend more money also to the real economy. But when the curve goes inverted, uh, banks, banks' profits go down. And uh, you saw Goldman Sachs just got rid of a lot of people. Yeah, their profits go down. They won't lend as much to the economy. And then the economy heals over. So yes, I think we will have a recession. Uh, well, as I said, we've had a recession uh, in my view since 07 because the deficit spending has papered over everything. And I, I haven't even uh, talked about how uh, real GDP is probably a lot lower as well because they use phony CPI numbers. So uh, even if you don't add the uh, deficits, uh, yeah. So, so I think, uh, yeah, we will definitely get a, a really bad recession in their eyes, in the mainstream eyes, because, of course, they don't look at the debt like we do or I do. Do you think silver is more manipulated than gold in Dururama? Um, it depends, because sometimes... Uh, we, we have the opposite happening when silver takes off and gold takes a little longer. But yeah, silver is a lot hard, uh, easier, sorry, to manipulate because it's a much smaller market. It's not that it's more, they, they manipulate it more, but it's just that it's easier to do it, I think. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, except for people like us and, uh, the silver squeeze guys, Wall Street silver guys, and the apes, 
you know, we buy real physical silver. A lot of people will go and buy the uh, ETFs. And, and I think that doesn't help because uh, ETF is just paper, I would say, SLV. And even uh, the Sprott ETF, I'm not too sure uh, how much you need to have to actually take delivery of the silver, even though I think they do have the silver. Uh, over here, uh, Mary, is gold inventory shown on the treasury books or federal reserve books? Uh, well, the treasury has the physical gold and the uh, Fed has the gold certificates. And uh, why is that? Well, because in 1933, when Roosevelt signed the uh, executive order to confiscate the gold, uh, the American public, they had to take their gold to their local Federal Reserve branch and hand it in. And the Fed gave them like Federal Reserve notes. And then the Fed had to, to give the gold <laughs> to the Treasury. And then they put the Treasury put all that gold in Fort Knox. Fort Knox, I think, was completed in 1937 to put all that gold. But then the US Treasury had to issue uh, the certificates to the Fed. So I think ultimately the gold that the US Treasury has and the certificates that the Fed has are actually uh, ultimately that gold is the American public's gold, not, not the Fed nor the Treasuries. Uh, Josh reported, do you think NATO will intensify war to boost the economy? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that war is always like a, a way to paper over economic weakness. And uh, yeah, they're, they're going to, it seems they're determined to, to keep uh, helping uh, the Ukraine and that they want uh, regime change uh, in Russia. Uh, YouTuber Jay uh, Helsinki says YouTuber Jay Snip4 has mentioned 20 cent XRP coming in silver at six dollars. Even Cliff High had mentioned Jay Snip4 in this uh, six silver. Do you see any pathways or possibility of this? Yeah, I know Jay Snip4. I mean, uh, one of the reasons I started my channel back in 20 late 2015 was that I watched Jay, Jay Snip4 and I got some advice from him about how to start a channel but uh i don't really follow him that much anymore i mean cliff high had uh, predictions of 600 dollars silver so i'm not sure about the six dollar uh greg austin why are u.s palladium coin coins numismatic I'm not sure what you mean. Numismatic coins are just collectible coins, you know, gold and silver, or I'm not, I, I, I don't know if there are collectible palladium coins. Yeah, basically numismatic coins are coins. Let's say you, you have a, a $20 gold piece from the 19th century that is a, 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 a from, a, a, let's say, Cars, Carson City Mint that doesn't exist anymore. And the year that it was rare, you know, it will be worth maybe four or five thousand dollars for like the twenty dollar gold piece, which is just under an ounce. So I'm not really sure uh, what you mean by numismatic palladium. Uh, Boris Bulyak says only gold is dinero or money. Uh, I think silver is money too. Anything can be money, really. Uh, at the end of World War II, cigarette was money in Germany. <laughs> they didn't have a currency and uh, mo a lot of people wanted cigarettes. So if you had cigarettes from the uh, American soldiers uh, or the uh, allied soldiers that occupied Germany, you could use that to exchange for a lot of things. Uh, what's the best ratio to have in gold and silver? I, I think that's all about preference. Uh, it, uh, I have more uh, gold 
in fiat terms than, than silver. Uh, Belly Dance Arabia, I agree. No one will turn in their gold now. And the thing is, back in 1933, uh, gold was money and a lot of people had gold. Nowadays, very few people have gold, I would say. Cupid, stupid, echo, 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 yep, two forms of ID and utility bills. I think it depends on the, uh, I think you're, you're talking about uh, buying uh, gold from dealers in the UK. It depends on the dealers, not all of them, I would say maybe, uh, yeah. If you know the, the dealer for a long time, I think... Uh, they do that only with people they don't know because of money, money laundry. <laughs> AcadQC, what will happen to us here in Canada once the fiat currency crashes? We have no gold reserves. Bank of Canada sold every single ounce. Yeah, I know. I think the only thing going for you, you have a, a lot of natural resources, uh, gold under the ground, but it's uh, really... Uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing that Canada got, got rid of all, all its gold reserves. It, it will just make your currency uh, uh, drop faster than all the other ones. Um, but ultimately, they're all going, you know, going down uh, in value. But as I said, you know, it helps that you have a big natural resource um, sector in Canada. Who Jimmy Hat says, who pays for the cost of, my, of the mining? Well, the company that mines, of course, uh, but sometimes the, ex, the junior explore, well, cost of mining, that's different. Junior explorers, they're not mining. They're like exploring, they're drilling. Uh, I think that's what you mean. Who pays for that? Well, investors do when they buy, you know, when they issue stock uh, and uh, capital and they raise equity. A lot of times if they run out, they'll have to have another issue or they get private placements as well. Uh, investors. But for the big miners that are already exploring gold, they pay for the cost of mining. Uh, from the pro the set with the proceeds of the sale of the gold gold that they make. Quickly, Pete, uh, will they confiscate gold and silver in the reset? I don't think they'll confiscate silver. They've never done that. Uh, and uh, I don't know where you are, Ricky. Quickly, Pete, maybe you're in the U.S. Uh, or in the U.K. As I said uh, a few minutes ago, very few people now have gold. So I think it's the wrong way about it. I don't think they will confiscate, but they they can do anything, of course. What what they might do is basically confiscate pension pension schemes. They did that in Poland a few years ago. Uh, yeah, they <laughs> they could basically uh yeah, they're doing that now in the U.S. as well with the debt ceiling. The uh, U.S. Treasury is dipping into uh, like the government pension. Uh, you public, you know, work people who work for the U.S. government they have a pension scheme, and uh, Janet Yellen is dipping into that to keep the debt ceiling uh, from you know from going higher. Well, yeah, because they've had to stop spending. A thousand silver, will the stock market ever crash? Well, if you listen to Michael Oliver of uh, Momentum, Momentum Structure Analysis, uh, there's never been a bear market after a, a sharp stock market crash, like in 1987. For example, there was a crash of 20% in one day. 
and then the market just kept going higher. And uh, he he thinks we're in a bear market. So, um, I mean, the Nasdaq lo lost over thirty percent already last year. The S and P about twenty percent, and I think it's going to keep going lower. But I'm not sure we'll get. Uh, we could get a crash, but uh, I, I think uh, he calls it the arm wrestling. You know, it's like it goes down and comes back up, and it just frustrates people. And that's a bear market, I think. Uh, SAS finance, how many millions of people uh, die when global hyperinflation hits? It's difficult to say, but <laughs> I think a lot of people are suffering already with the cost of living crisis, with uh, the currencies going down. Yeah. Miru 2004, I've frozen my pension and buy metals instead. Well, that's what uh, we did after 2002. Uh, I stopped paying into the pension and started buying metal. Because, yeah, they give you an incentive here in the UK, uh, like a 40% kicker if you're a higher rate taxpayer. Uh, to put it into a private pension, but they can take that away. They take that away when you cash part of that pension because they charge they they will uh, tax you on that. So it's a false thing. So in the UK, if you buy sovereigns and Britannias, they're capital gains tax free. Yes, it might cost. You won't get like a forty percent kicker, but I think it's the way to go. Um, could they uh, apply capital gains tax to uh, uh, Britannias and sovereigns or legal tender coins of the realm? It's possible, but I would say no, because a lot of the people in charge, a lot of the people who have a lot of the wealth and the elites in the UK, they probably have a lot of it and they don't want it taxed. So I think should be okay with it. Carlos Garcia, how much is in UK silver, Britannia, and US dollars? Well, we just have to do the exchange rate. I think right now they're trading around 30, 28 to 30 pounds with the premium. So divided by 1.25 or times 1.25 a quarter. So it's trading around uh, $37. And I think that includes the, the VAT. I don't worry about the VAT because I like silver, the physical silver. And I know that in 5, 10, uh, 15 years time, or even after I'm gone, it still will be worth something and I can leave it to my family. Uh, Josh reported, do, do you have, do I have any business ventures on the horizon? Well, you know, the videos that I make every day, and this is my business, you know, the YouTube uh, channel. And I, I do do uh, some promotional videos about, well, I do one once a month for some mining companies through a marketing company. And you've guys seen that many of you, <laughs> some of, some people don't like that, but uh, I wouldn't be able to focus 100% on doing my videos if I didn't have some other outside income, even though the YouTube uh, advertisement helps. Uh, what else am I looking to do? Um, no, that's about it. And also hopefully increasing, uh, increasing my business in the States uh, with uh, my new partners I've had for the last few months, like uh, ITM Trading and Miles Franklin, so that my viewers will maybe, if they're looking to buy gold and silver, they'll do it through ITM Trading or Miles Franklin. Here in the UK, of course, I already have 
uh, partner with Gold Investments. So that's that's the way I'm looking at things. Um, I mean, I, I've had a, a lot of people come, you know, companies come and ask me if I want sponsorship. And uh, I have to turn them down because uh, a lot of them have nothing to do with what I talk about. And I, I could have done something, but I think it's more important to keep it to uh, keep it uh, within our theme, right? And um, so that that's uh, uh, Ama Det says a matter in it for the money. Well, <laughs> uh, someone you know. It costs to live. Maybe Amadet has a trust fund, or maybe uh, Amadet is on the gets money from the government. But uh, most of us have to create some value, and that's what I try to do on the channel. But um, someone just asked me that. That's what I'm doing. Mary Darima says, thank you for making your videos and appreciate your recommendation. Yeah, I don't know, maybe Ama Det is uh, being kind of uh, sarcastic. It's difficult to say uh, on, uh, on social media, but uh, anyway. I'm gonna keep going uh, until 10, uh, yeah, another 15 minutes. Because I think a lot of people uh, missed in the beginning. There is some trouble there. Richard Martin says your videos are the best. <laughs> well, thank you. That's nice of you to say that. A Boris Bulyak works for burritos. Okay. I'm not really too much into burritos. <laughs> How to stay safe during a collapse. Hannah, Mario, you're adding lots of value. Thank you. Well, that's what I try to do. <laughs> you, you have to in life. Uh, you have to find uh, something that you can do to add value or else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I used to work in the city for 20 years and then I tried my uh, pawnbroking uh, franchise for a couple of years. And uh, it's taken a long time to get things going again. But uh, what helped me was that we had savings. So I never had to, we didn't really have any uh, problems. And that's why it's so important to have savings when things uh, don't work out. Uh, Christy Easley says we can buy Britannia's cheaper in America. Well, I'll tell you why. You know what's happening? The Royal Mint sells a lot of the, the silver to, to America. <laughs> and uh, a lot of times the, the dealers in the UK, they have to go to other places to buy the Britannia's. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and that's why uh, probably it's more expensive here because they don't have as uh, yeah, the the Royal Mint is selling a lot of its silver abroad, <laughs> so I'm not not surprised about that. Thousand Silver Mario stock tips have been good. Yeah, I mean they're not tips; they're just like you know information about them, and uh, it's up to you to decide. I guess they are tips. I mean, uh, not all of them will work, but. Um, yeah, at least, you know, some of you want to know about opportunities, and that's what I try to do once in a while. Uh, Dan Harrington says, LBMA used to source a lot of their silver from Russia. Yeah, and they've uh, they kicked out a lot of the Russian uh, companies or dealers that were part of the LBMA, uh, where are they sourcing some of them now? I don't know, maybe that's why, you know, there's a bit of a shortage 
of of silver and the the market is so tight um they they're probably they're having to get it from elsewhere maybe from india <laughs> because india uh they'll keep buying from uh, from russia and then sell it to the lbma for a profit just like they're doing with the oil so maybe the indians are benefiting over here amaria how about interviewing bill holter yeah i will yeah I, I like bill holter i've been listening to him for a long time um yeah i'll have to look him up he, I, I think the uh isn't the js mindset website that's gone that's disappeared isn't it but i i can ask uh, andy Sheckman uh, if he can get a, a contact uh, bill holter for me because i know andy of course and i think uh, andy and uh, bill holter are quite close they work together what does tight and finance mean oh it means higher interest rates it means harder to get loans that's what it means yeah jack b says russian gold goes to dubai and then uh to switzerland and lbma but i i think a lot of the russian gold now is going to china as well the chinese are buying from the russian miners peter harwa from south africa I'm buying one ounce gold Kruger and coins, 5% above gold price. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable uh, premium, 5%, 4 to 5% uh, is okay at the moment. We got another eight minutes. Uh, echo echo do you think there is a market for space tourism <laughs> it sounds bizarre to me and yet in line with the idea of excess versus people who have nothing yeah that that is a symptom of uh a bubble i agree with you and uh it's not really space travel and, and a lot of it is just like pr like virgin galactic and all that rubbish uh and uh if you i don't think we'll ever be able to go into real space you know out of the atmosphere uh because there's something called the van ryan belt <laughs> van allen belt sorry not van ryan van van allen belt and um what they mean by space travel is just traveling you know a little higher than an airplane so but it's a good point it, it it's a it's a sign of excessive uh too much all those all that 27 22 trillion in deficit spending since 07 uh it leads to a lot of malinvestment as the austrians say and a, a lot of things uh, are going to change and um especially at the high end i think carlos garcia thank you for your soup chat here a silver britannia for billy's successor uh rudy the silver ranger um <laughs> uh, like jp morgan please print print too much fear silver su su silver spoon puppy thank you uh carlos <laughs> any sector other than resources you think could do well in the next few years well, I, I think uh, you, you'd have to be very selective, but I think uh, resources, precious metals are going to outperform everything else. Uh, I'm not really uh, an analyst, stock market analyst. I mean, there there could be some sectors that will do well, but I'm, you know, it's going to be more difficult. It's not going to, yeah, I think... Uh, Select being selective will be important, or maybe also if you're in the U.S., I think uh, foreign stocks uh, like uh, emerging market stocks are going to outperform the uh, American market because uh, the U.S. market has had a huge premium ever since 2007 because the U.S. has been able to inflate much more this credit bubble 
and uh, the other countries haven't done as well. So I, I think they're going to outperform the U.S. So yeah, foreign stock markets, uh, I think, are going to do better than American stock markets. Uh, Scott, I haven't heard uh, about someone buying an RV with Kruger rents, but why not? If the uh, seller of the RV, you know, accepts the Kruger rents, there's no reason why why that trade can't be done. Uh, Joshua Porter, thank you for your super chat. Keep it up, he says. Uh, Akbay Nguyen, Nguyen uh, have you looked into Joseph Tainter's work on complex societies? I haven't. I'll have a look. I'll keep it in mind. Joseph Tainter. Could you, uh, Elias Jones, could you do a series on bimetallism? The system seems weird. Um, well, I can say that I think bimetallism is a good, it provides liquidity. You know, when the uh, Coinage Act of 1792 in the US provided, it was, it was a bimetallic system, uh, gold and silver. The ratio was around 15 to 1. Yeah, because if you only had gold, um, yeah, it, it there wouldn't be enough liquidity or, in, you know, gold, I, I think it's a good system, but uh, I'll look more into it and do something in more detail. And Dura-Rama, and Dura-Rama, yeah, that's right. Thank you for your super chat. Thanks for sharing your knowledge with us, Mario. You're welcome. Uh, Thomas Moran says, I just heard that commercial real estate is down 17%. Uh, do you think that could go down much further? Yeah, I think commercial real estate is probably going to suffer more than residential, especially here in the UK, but in the US as well. Echo, echo, have you been impressed with, by Nouriel Rubini's outlook on the economy? He seems realist to me. No, I, I haven't really followed Rubini lately. Um, yeah, so I haven't read that book. Uh, Jay Jones says bullion dealers no longer want cash. I don't think, but at least here in the UK, that's not true. But uh, maybe where you are, it is. Uh, Christy Easley says America is the world's third largest exporter of oil. In the world, the reason America has high fuel prices is because government and regulations. Um, well, America has uh, a, low, a lot lower prices than the rest of the world in terms of refined uh, oil products. But uh, I would say the oil price is, uh, is traded in the international market. So it doesn't matter if America is the third biggest producer. If the price goes up, <laughs> it will go up in the U.S. as well. It's like gold. Gold is uh, traded internationally. Most things aren't. Uh, Mary, what would the effects be if Twitter goes bankrupt? Uh, I haven't thought of that. Maybe someone else, someone will take over it. I think someone would take over it. Uh, Silver Task says, show your support and hit the like button. Yeah, that helps. Uh, Jay Jones uh, says, if the dollar is becoming worthless, when would bullion dealers not want to sell in cash? Well, it, it that will happen when uh, 
uh, volatility becomes huge when gold is moving like a hundred, one hundred and fifty dollars uh, a day. Uh, they won't even deal; they'll shut shop. Uh, no, they're still accepting cash because you still need fiat currency. So, but uh, yeah, one day when um, hyperinflation, they will accept the new currency, whatever that will be. But uh, yeah. All right. It's 10 o'clock, so I'm going to say... A uh, good night to you guys, and uh, thank you for showing up. And uh, I will uh, talk to you uh, tomorrow. And uh, I hope you all have a, a, a very good uh, coming week and uh, a, a good end to the weekend. Take care. Bye. <laughs>